Welcome to Moving Through and Beyond, a podcast dedicated to sharing inspired journeys of redefining life, vision, and purpose after immense hardship and grief. My goal with this podcast is to give you hope and to let my guest journeys inspire you to make the choice to keep looking up. I'm your host, Carrie Conley. Hi, everyone. This is Carrie Conley, your host of the Moving Through and Beyond podcast. And I am so excited and honored to have a friend of mine uh, here with me today. She's going to talk a little bit about her story and her journey to bring some hope, right, to um, some other moms. And we'll talk about that. But I, I appreciate you being here, Christine. Thank you for thinking of me. We've yeah. known each other for a short time and ran into each other in some other events. And yes. so it's about time we'll we got connected. We'll talk about that too, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so I love it when people get to come in studio because mm-hmm. this is really fun. Mm-hmm. being here in Arizona mm-hmm. and having you here. Mm-hmm. So um, so I just really w- love people to kind of share their stories, their background, and um, we'll, then we'll get into talking about kind of what you and I share in common, losing our children, right? So are you from Arizona? Where are you from? I guess I've lived here longer than I've been a lot. Well, not live, excuse me. Uh, we moved here my senior year in 1987. So um, yeah, a long time, but not originally yep. from here, no. Yeah. What was your childhood like? What your Growing oh, up, growing always up. on the go. Yeah. Always on the go. My stepdad was um, the PR person for AFL-CIO, the union. So we moved around as much as someone in the military. Wow. Went to three different high schools in four years. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and how was that? <laughs> um, that's probably why I'm outgoing and easy to talk, <laughs> yeah. find people to talk to because every time we moved, we had to find new friends. So I just got used to talking to strangers. Okay. Well, good for you <laughs> because it could have gone a co- totally different way. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Really isolated, shut down. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just talking to somebody else on a podcast about the percentages of loneliness in our kids yes. is really, really high. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So good for you for getting out there because that could have been really challenging. We're living in different times now than right. then. We've got electronic devices that keep our kids right. occupied versus going out there and meeting total strangers. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it is a different time. They're mm-hmm. communicating through texting. Uh, online, Zooming now, of course, all the things, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, They're not going outside like we were told, go outside and play. Right. Find something to do, come back at dark. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> now you're like, I'm in bed by dark. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I know you do a lot of things here in the Valley, right? On I a do. couple of different boards. I know you're really involved mm-hmm. in a lot of nonprofits. Mm-hmm. You want to share a little bit about that? I believe in giving back to the community. Um, without getting into great detail, you had, meant, you had asked, well, my childhood. Um, there's a part of my childhood where there's a reason why I do what I do, because my mom was a single mom for a few years before she married my stepdad. Okay. And so there were some hardships. Yeah. And you know, some of those hardships I always remembered what someone else that I never met made us feel like. All right. So I give back to the community. Um, I'm on a committee, excuse me, I'm on a couple of different committees in I the city of that. Chandler. <laughs> <laughs> um I'm on a couple of different committees where they do uh, cleanups once a year with the city of Chandler. And then I'm also on a for our city committee for Operation Back to School Backpack. You know, we work with the Title I schools where, again, uh, the income is not always going to have the benefit of getting those school supplies that students need for school. Mm-hmm. So we do that uh, once a year as well, which is coming up in a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also the uh, community outreach board member for an organization called Chandler Business Alliance Foundation, okay. where I get to, I had this dream as a kid. Okay, so I get to say this is so <laughs> much fun. As a kid, I remember, you remember Ed McMahon. Yes, of course. Publisher's Clearinghouse. Yes. And that big old check. Yes. I was the one that was like, oh my gosh, that's so fun. I want to do that. Who would have thought many years later, I'm that one that gets to present that check. That's so cool. To the nonprofits once a, once a month, excuse me, that we do um, get funds and we give them to nonprofit organizations. That's very cool. Yeah. I think you also run another business as well, right? So I have a nonprofit, uh, Remember Me Always, Um and we'll get into why I founded that. Yeah. And then Stories of Hope is my podcast, right. vodcast, which is a video podcast like yeah. yours is. And that is sharing people's stories to help others, as you are doing with me being here and other guests that you have. Yeah. And that's umbrellaed under my nonprofit and has to do again with the founding of my, my personal story. Wow. Mm-hmm. So much, girl. You Lots too. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yes. So I know that um, the most recent thing that you and I ran into each other at was a, is a huge event that's held here in Arizona every other year called uh, Helping Parents Heal. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea about this organization until mm-hmm. like a year and a half ago, Christine. Mm-hmm. Um, I got introduced to it to, by another mutual friend of ours. And 
it just so happened that I signed up like literally within three weeks to be at that conference. The same when I saw you? It. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yes. Um, so it, this, unfortunately, is a group of people who have all lost their children one way or another. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there was 900 of us mm -hmm. at that event. And I know she was also streaming it online. So there was mm -hmm. tens of thousands of people, I mm -hmm. think, all, like all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of crazy. And the, that connection that you and I have, both losing a, a child. I know that you lost your daughter, Nicole, mm -hmm. in 2007, right? New Year's Day. Yeah. 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 You know, I was going to say something about that event, uh, only because I didn't know about that organization either. Um, it was actually being founded very early in the stages of when I lost my daughter, and right. it's by Elizabeth. And I remember meeting in this small little church, and there were no more than 15 or 20 of us. That was oh, the first uh, chapter that she started. And just to watch it grow the way they did... I say it in a good way, yeah. and in, you know, in, the, in a positive. Um, it's it's a touchy subject to say. How do you say the death of a child is good? Well, because now she's connected so many people, such as ourselves and our yeah. mutual friends that have connected us, to be able to connect in a in a level where people don't have to feel like they're the only ones walking that journey. Yeah. Because before I had met Elizabeth through another common friend that um, we know, I think mm -hmm. um, I'd never heard of anyone losing a child, let alone. Right know what to do. Yeah. So my life went into a definite spin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because one of the things that I'm hoping parents hear, um, if you are in this situation as to how, what helped you get through that um, and how you're doing now. I'm doing well now, but in the beginning, not so much as you could relate to mm -hmm. and any other person or, you know, mother or father. Who's lost a, a child. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just the parents. It's everyone who knew that individual, that child right. that is affected by it. We just are affected differently. Mm -hmm. And people will say to you, oh, I can't imagine losing a child. And I used to hate to hear that phrase. Mm -hmm. I didn't imagine it either. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it's become the new norm and will be until the day I take my last breath. Yep. Um, in the beginning, it was very, very difficult because mm -hmm. my family life went not so well. Okay. Um. And then there were some mistakes I made along the way because I didn't understand what grief was and that there were different stages of grief. Mm -hmm. So I made some poor choices. But my focus was also to make sure I took care of my son, which he's 28 now. And um, he turned out pretty good for me going through my <laughs> struggles. Um, Is he older or younger than your daughter? It's interesting because what I was thinking in my head, you said, you asked this question. So... The night that my life changed, mm -hmm. we as a family always went out to the California sand dunes and we had fun being an outdoor family and off-road family. Mm -hmm. And my son's birthday happens to be during that winter break and my son's birthday is December 30th. So okay. we were out there celebrating his birthday and um, our accident happened December 31st and my daughter passed away New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. So I have a different calendar and my son had just turned 11. Okay. So he was just a baby. So mm -hmm. um, he is now 28. And so he was, yeah, he was younger. My mm -hmm. daughter was 17. Um, you never forget that day. Yeah. No matter how many years pass by. Yeah, it's so true. And the one thing I would like to be able to share, as, as I'm sure you've been able to, is when people say, I can't imagine. Well, then you think about all the things you had to imagine. Right. And how your life changed in so many different ways mm -hmm. that you didn't think were possible. As mm -hmm. hard as it is at this very moment, if someone's dealing with that, um, you do get through it. You learn to accept it. Mm -hmm. And like you, you find different things that put your energy towards the remembrance of your loved one um, that are in a positive way. So you right. took something that wasn't so positive and you turned it around. And I think Oprah was best known for saying, turn pain into power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many things that you're talking about here, you know, obviously you don't ever forget that day. It's like it happened yesterday, mm -hmm. right? Blurry. Mm -hmm. For me, there's lots of blur because mm -hmm. I was in such shock mm -hmm. uh, because I lost my son to suicide when he was 25. Three years prior to that, losing also lost my husband to suicide. So just complete, utter, you are just like not even no. on this planet. No. Right? No. And you're like that for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, and there are still moments where I have to look around and go, is this really happening? Like this really happened? You know how many times I've wanted to tell my daughter, hey, this, and mm -hmm. then it's just like that. You have to stop and go, she's been gone. My daughter's been gone for 16 years. Yeah. And you think, 
you want to call them and tell them what you're doing and yeah. you can't. And it goes back on when people say, you just know when your last, you don't know when your last day is. But how many people really let that sink in yeah. to understand what that means? Because mm-hmm. once you're gone, you're going to be gone longer than you lived. So how are you living? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what helped you move through those days? People, the people around you, your faith, um, Anyone on this trail will know that the faith is the first thing we get upset about, mm. right? I'll be honest. There was like, oh, God, Oof. he was supposed to be good. This isn't good. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the stages of grief, as yep. I'm sure you know. Yep. Um, I would say my son and knowing that I had another individual that needed me, yeah. but that I also knew there was other things that I needed to do. Not sure what they were going to be, you know, moving forward to where we are today, that I would be doing what I'm doing as you are doing what you're doing. Right. Um, being that light in the darkness wasn't the last thing I was thinking of. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of tears and, and uh, angry, yeah. very angry. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I didn't uh, – most people ask me, you must be so angry that they did this. And anger is probably the least emotion that I had um, because I knew they didn't do it to me, mm-hmm. right? It's mm-hmm. not like they did this intentionally. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so – but the feeling of, yes – it's definitely the God thing. Like, I'm seriously, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. this is happening again, to, mm-hmm. and it's my son. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I really had to to circle back around to faith, and I have a very strong faith now. But there was a lot of times I was just like, this isn't happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also had a younger daughter who was still in college, so I had to get her back to school, and we had to figure out, like, how are we going to do this? And you know right. what? You and I have that. There mm-hmm. are people who may only have one child and right. lose them. So I, we should probably think of how are we helping that individual? It's probably yep. listening to this saying, well, I don't have any other children, mm. you know, and, and yep. maybe Good I don't point. have a marriage anymore, too, because that we know has mm-hmm. changed a lot of people's lives once a child is lost. This is so true. I would have to say, if that was the case, it's really sit with yourself mm-hmm. because there's actually something within you that you can find that is positive out of the tragedy or the trauma um, that you can do. I've interviewed a lot of organizations and individuals that found to be that light in other people's lives Mm -hmm. by founding an an organization that will help someone else get through their journey um, as I've tried to figure out how to get through mine by sharing other people's stories. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, it's interesting. I've I've talked a lot about this. My daughter and I co-authored a book together, as you know, Mm -hmm. um, two years after my son passed called Keep Looking Up. And in one of the chapters, we talked about we talked about all the things that helped us get through it because so many people have come to us saying, I've got somebody who's going through something and I don't know how to help them. Oh, always hear that <laughs> yeah. one. What do I say? What, what do, do I do? do? <laughs> They're always, there's, it's, and it's interesting because the normal reaction is they want to go help that person the, the way they would want to be helped. Right. So, for example, um, my daughter is not a touchy person at all. Okay. And... Um, she literally at my husband's memorial, everybody was hugging her, squeezing her, hugging her. She literally had a slight little panic attack and ended up in the bathroom for the rest of the time that we were there. So we did not do that at my son's. (laughs) So it's just things like that, but that's what people want to do. They feel like, I I would want to be hugged and I would want all this, so this is what I'm going to do. Or, um, you know, maybe they need counseling. Let's all group up and circle up into a big circle. And, you know, so... It's interesting what helped me was different than what helped my daughter and probably what helped you. Don't forget the books that people are so kind to purchase. Right. They don't have a clue, or maybe they do. Mm -hmm. I did not, and forgive me for anyone who might be hearing this, that gave me a book a long time ago. I never opened the book. Mm. It wasn't about the book. It was about the connections. And as you know, everyone comes flooding in at that moment when everything has changed in your life. And we love that they're there. We feel that comfort. And then everyone goes back to their own lives. Exactly. And then there's that other part of the grievance. You're by yourself trying right. to deal with what just happened because there's not that love, the hugs, even though you didn't want them. There's not the energy of other people. There's not mm-hmm. the words and the conversations that people were trying to help you get through something you sure you sure were not, you were not sure rather to get through. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think what helped us is that we really learned to... to Number one, communicate Mm -hmm. to everybody around us what what was helping and what was not. Mm -hmm. Um, I specifically remember telling a lot of my family and friends, please don't bring us food. (laughs) Oh, I had tons of food. (laughs) Please don't bring us any more food. Uh, That's the other thing, the normal human reaction. Let's bring food, right? Right, right. Um, So we communicated that. We we really, truly, we mean this, right? Um, We also 
made sure that we had people that were our super safe people, Christine. They were the ones that we knew we could have them around us because they knew exactly how to manage our emotion the way we wanted. I like the way you said that. Yeah. I didn't have that. Yeah. Um, gatekeepers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They became the gatekeepers that kind of kept everybody where they needed to be so that we could just deal with what we needed to deal with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And now, now my loss um, was quite different than yours. Mm-hmm. And um, as many people as I sit down, I'm sure you can say the same thing and you hear their story. Mm-hmm. I will take my story back every time. Mm-hmm. Because I've learned to adapt to it mm-hmm. and move forward with it. Mm-hmm. Where there are other people that you see that they can do the same thing. And I'm like, I don't know how I would have done that. Um, my daughter didn't take her own life. Mm-hmm. I was in a rollover accident and she was ejected from our vehicle. Mm-hmm. And um, she did pass away. I had to go find her mm-hmm. being, being ejected. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are a lot of things I think, no, I know that I've blocked out. Because you don't mm-hmm. need to remember the details. You know, people say, so how do they pass? And I go, wait a minute. How'd they live? Mm-hmm. Because then you get stuck on how they pass versus who they well, who were they prior to this? Yeah. So I'm a little stickler of it. Yeah, the questions are always interesting, aren't they? And <laughs> some of the things yeah. in this that people will say, Yeah, um, I really want to put an etiquette, a book or something, a, a video, something that other people will say, these are things you don't say mm-hmm. and these are things you want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, Because I've heard a lot of things. I'm like, did that really come out of their mouth? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Do you know the best question we got? This was literally about two weeks after my son passed. My daughter and I went to uh, a convention with a group of women because we knew that's where we needed to be. And one of the women came up to us and said, you know, I don't, I've never been through this with somebody. So you're going to have to coach me on how I can help you. Oh, and I thought that was brilliant. It was a great conversation. Right? Oh, wow. You're going to have to coach me yeah. on how I can help you. Mm. Um, so it was, you know, for us, moving through it at that uh, freshness of the moment, right, of their passing and everything, it was just, I think people need to know, especially if you're a parent, since this is kind of new to you, mm-hmm. that it's, it is, it's a fog. Mm-hmm. And it's totally up to you as to how long that fog's going to last. Mm-hmm. Don't put any time frame on it because you see mm-hmm. somebody else that moved through it so much faster. There's no timeline on it. No. And then the other thing I would hear from people, well, does it bother you because you're, you know, you show that you're happy? Oh, I'm not going to show I'm upset all the time because mm-hmm. then people don't want to be around you either. Right. You know, you want to give them some hope yeah. that you can still have something that happened to you. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you have to be different and still not chase the dreams that you want. It's right. just, like you said, it's it's on your time, your terms is what I would say. Your time, your terms. I love yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of grace. Give yourself a lot mm-hmm. of grace and a lot of compassion. And you know the phrase also, it's okay to not be okay. Yeah. And then I add to it, but don't stay there. Yeah. Well, and this is where I, so when I went to the Helping Parents Heal, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was interesting because... There was there's a piece to this that I believe you and I believe the same thing that has been probably the biggest thing that's helped me the most is knowing how much they are still here. Right? Oh, you mean our loved ones? Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, to be in a room with all these parents and being told that our kids were all there mm-hmm. was just it, it for me has given me more peace than anything else. I am very aware of my son and my husband. Most especially my son, because we were super close and a lot um, attached in spirit, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel him all the time, get signs from him all the time. I'm very aware that he is just here and wants wants to keep working through us. I found that it was a confirmation of something I felt, but not everyone wants to hear you talk about it. Or you're not sure who to talk about it, because you had mentioned a little while ago, you're safe people. Mm Mm-hmm. This was a room full of safe people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's so interesting because like you just said a minute ago, we were all enjoying each other's company, laughing, mm-hmm. uh, getting to know each other because there was such a camaraderie. It's so interesting when you're in a room full of people that have all been through something similar, different situations, but loss of a child, right? That there there was no need for small talk or introductions or, hey, what do you do? And 
Here's, but, yeah. yeah. And I like to call it the me too factor. Mm-hmm. Me too. Me too. And no one has to feel bad if they start crying. No one has to right. feel guilty if someone's crying or feels guilty that they're not saying anything because not everyone wants to talk about it. Right. And and as well, there are people that are that were here there, excuse me, that are going through different times right. of it. And mm-hmm. um, you know, back in the day when you were younger, at least this is my beliefs, was we don't die when we're young. We die when we're old. Right. Our grandparents, they get old and then they die. That's expected. So we thought that's not the case. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of different um, walks of life and different beliefs in the room where everyone says, it's okay to not be okay and you're safe being here doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. Have you found being a part of organizations like that? Did you do counseling? Did that help you? I I, I went uh, inward a lot. My daughter, I'm now doing a little bit of counseling and I'm starting to learn that I need some work on releasing trauma. I'm starting figuring out that how deep into your cells that gets without mm-hmm. you really knowing it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I am seeking out some help, but there for a long time I did not. I just needed to be really, really within myself, right? I don't. What helped you? Well, we don't walk around with an open book that says, this is why I am the way that I am. Mm-hmm. But everyone has a reason why they are who they are because of where they once were, right? Mm-hmm. Um I stayed busy. My focus was my son. My life was falling apart. I did some stupid stuff. Mm. Um, so my mindset was not the same. And then I didn't have any direction. I didn't even know where to go to ask for resources. No, I didn't do any counseling crazy enough. Mm-hmm. But I will be honest with you. Since Nicole's been gone for 16 years, I would have to say it was only maybe eight years ago. hmm That I actually, and I think it's because my son was out on his own now. Like I said, he's 28. So he'd moved somewhere else. I I thought I was running away from being here in the valley. I moved up north a couple hours away. And now I'm back in the valley. That didn't, (laughs) running away didn't didn't work out for me. (laughs) Right. But what I did find, excuse me, was the inner peace. So when you talked about you went inward, I removed myself from a situation Mm -hmm. thinking I was starting my life over because there was nothing in this area that was going to remind me of the trauma or that situation, the people, none of it was going to remind me of that. And I did not realize that when I moved up to the Sedona, Arizona area, that I was going to find peace taking care of a friend of mine's horses, cows, chickens, you know, the big city girl goes totally opposite direction. And that's where I found my peace was being grounded, not realizing it was me that I was by myself inward Mm -hmm. and the animals. Animals are such a healing too. Mm -hmm. And that was when I started realizing how much around us are we allowing to control our emotions and how much are we allowing to take in to comfort yeah. our emotions. And that's what I learned. Yeah. So you brought up a really good point. So my word this year is reinvention. Oh. I thought it was a different word, but about six weeks ago, this word started popping up like everywhere for me. Okay. And I think that it's important for parents to know that when you've lost a child, so much of your identity um, is kind of stripped away. Mm-hmm. And you start finding out, and again, timing is different for everybody as to when this starts happening. You start realizing that, you know what, you still have a purpose and there might be a, you might need to reinvent yourself and go in a whole different direction of what you thought you were going to do with your life. And it's okay because, you know, I'm known as the vision expert, as you know, I help people get really clear on their vision and get it written, but it can change. Yep, it can. Mm -hmm. Absolutely can. And it's okay. That's okay, too. I think as adults, we think if we don't stay on the path we set out, like stay at the job we were meant to be in or, you know, stay with the family members we were supposed to, that we're failing in some way. And I'm here to say that, you know what, there are just moments where you just are broken open and you have to go in a whole different direction, right? And then I'm going to use this word just because of the way that you said things. And I thought, reinventing. Absolutely. And we're not going to bring up a year that changed everybody's lives to find a reinventing. Mm-hmm. But you had mentioned purpose. Right. And the things that we have been programmed to think that we have to stay with certain people or stay with a certain job or have a certain lifestyle. There is not a manual. I don't know unless you got one. I didn't get one. <laughs> there was no manual that was presented when I was born. Mm -hmm. That you can only do this, and you can only know these people, and you can only have this vision, you can only have this dream. No, it's a clean slate every single day. If you're done doing that or done feeling that, then figure out how to change it. Mm -hmm. And so I like, I was told not to use this word, but we're going to use it. (laughs) We do get stuck. Mm -hmm. 
we feel stuck. And I will be honest this morning, I had one of my moments and you never know when that wave is going to hit you. Right. And I had one of those this morning. Um, and I was just like, oh, I feel stuck. Nope. Don't say the word. <laughs> but I, I, I felt, okay, I know I'm doing my purpose and I know that my daughter's behind me on it too. Right. And that's what gives me the comfort back of saying, I would not be doing what I'm doing if this didn't happen to me. Yeah. Just as you and what yeah. you're doing for other people too. Yeah. And I'm very clear on my mission. Mm -hmm. I'm very clear about how to use this for good. But like you, there are days where I think really seriously, this is my life now. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for me now. It's been almost nine years since my husband passed and almost six mm -hmm. since my son um, it's hard for me to go back and think about what my life was like before, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. it's changed so drastically. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot has happened. My daughter graduated from college, got married, now has two babies. <clears throat> I mean, boom, boom, boom. And I'm living in Oklahoma. <laughs> so I can <laughs> but be you're near coming back here. <laughs> yes, but I'm thinking about coming back to Arizona. Um, but I just, I really want. Anybody who's listening to this, whether you are a parent who's lost a child, whether that's new or it's been many, many years, like for me and Christine, or maybe you have a friend mm -hmm. that's lost somebody, that it's 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 a unique journey for everyone. And the the point we're making, we hope, is that you just need to keep moving forward and to know that they're always with you. There's one thing I didn't get to mention as you were saying that. Um, when I moved up north, I had decided that I was going to actually go figure, push myself through that pain, mm. that I was a first responder volunteer with the fire department up wow. there in Yavapai County. I did it for a year. And I, I say that I did this to help myself, but I was also helping other people. Mm -hmm. um, and that was because the day of my accident, I couldn't get a hold of one single person. There was no one there. Um, where we were located, we had to be evacuated out by a helicopter and then brought here to um, Arizona because we were in California when it happened. Okay. And um, I felt if I could be there for someone who wasn't there for me, mm -hmm. then that would help me. Interesting. And I saw some things that did push me. Um, and But then I also felt that comfort that I was able to help someone else mm -hmm. um, because the calls I was on was someone had passed away. Mm. Crazy enough, people would not go, well, why would you put yourself in that situation yet again? But crazy enough, it did help me. And I'll say anyone else needs to do it. You find what works for you. Right. And um, we talk about what we do for other people. Not everyone's going to want to do something for someone else on their journey of losing a loved one or mm -hmm. child. Um, but you have to look, like you said, look inward. What is it that you want to do now? Your life before, my life before was different too. I, I don't even look back and go, what was I doing? Because it doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where people get stuck yeah. is where I once was, but you're not there. Just like when some when our child has passed away and my daughter, her birthday was just recently. Mm -hmm. And people will say, well, happy whatever it would have been. Mm -hmm. And forgive me for saying this because I've come to a different um, appreciation for right. the passing of my daughter. Yeah, My daughter will never be the ages over 17 years old. Mm -hmm. So I will never say this would be your whatever birth date. She was preserved at the age of 17, mm -hmm. and that's the way it will always remain. Mm -hmm. So whoever wants to look at the years they are, for me, it was a loss in my heart to go, well, they would be this age. What would they be doing? And then I'm playing mind games. Right. I don't do that. And it's not right or wrong. It's what I do because I get to remember my daughter all those years I had her, mm -hmm. as you remembered your son and your husband. Right. And I, did, I didn't get to mention this. So you talk about six years with your son. Mm -hmm. It's funny you would say six because I was leaving a um, celebration of life for a friend of mine. Six years after my daughter passed, I got a phone call from my dad, my stepdad, telling me my youngest sister had passed away that morning. Wow. And there was that six-year mark right there. And mm -hmm. I felt I just got back on my feet. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Right. And my sister was 36. Her name is Lisa, and she passed away from a heart attack in her sleep. Mm. So there's no certain like checklist of how we're going to pass, mm -hmm. but there is a checklist of how you're going to live. Right. Well, I just hope that people listening to us will be encouraged, mm -hmm. feel supported, mm -hmm. feel that they are not alone, mm -hmm. um, because it's so easy in this world to isolate mm -hmm. and to think that they'll never get through the pain. Um, I remember sitting in one of the small breakout rooms at the conference we've mentioned a couple times, and 
there was a mom in there that just was really struggling. Christine didn't think, how am I supposed to keep going? I know. And my answer to her was, you've got to find a purpose for your mm-hmm. life and keep moving mm-hmm. forward. So I hope that's what you and I have encouraged people to do here today. And I appreciate the work that you're doing um, with your podcast, Stories of Hope. Thank you. Thank you for having me on there. Yes. I hope everybody will come find you. <laughs> <laughs> as I will make sure everyone comes and finds you yeah. too, because you're delivering a great message as well. Thank you. I appreciate mm-hmm. you being here. Mm-hmm. Thank you for having me, guest. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this podcast. I'm Carrie Conley, and I'm here to remind you to just keep looking up. If you found this episode inspiring or helpful, please share it with a friend or a family member. In order to be successful on this mission, I can't do it alone. Connect with me at www.carrieconley.com, and don't forget to sign up for my weekly Do It On Purpose newsletter. Let's build this life-giving vision movement together to end this epidemic, save lives, and create purpose. Mm-hmm.